You guys need to start adding this one move into your training if you're interested in increasing your throwing and exit velocity. Check it out. All right, so all you're gonna need for this move is a box that allows you to sit at roughly 90 degrees. So if you look from the side here, my knees are gonna be right under my hips in a powerful position. All it is is gonna be a lateral hop to the side, uh, your dominant side. So if you're a left-handed pitcher, you're gonna be driving off that left leg. If you're a right-handed pitcher, you're gonna be driving off that right leg. It's very important that we need to use all our drive force off that drive leg. So make sure you don't pull with that opposite leg. All of the force is just gonna be generated out of this left side if I'm going to the left. So it's gonna look something like this. I'm here, I'm gonna go set, I'm ready. Again, driving off this left leg. You can even lift this leg up a tad if you want. Set, go. So what we're going to do with this move is decrease what we call the electromechanical delay. Essentially, this means the nervous system activates our muscle fibers and then there is a slight delay between that initial activation and when we actually start producing force. So any explosive movement on the baseball field, it's very important to decrease that delay. So there's a lot that's going on in the actual muscle fiber that causes this delay. However, we're not gonna dive too deep into that because I don't wanna bore you with it. But one thing we need to talk about that's extremely important for you to know is the actual stiffness of the tendons themselves. Look at this band. Picture it as one of your tendons, all right? When the muscle contracts, this tendon has to delay this far before it becomes stiff, okay? So you have a loose tendon, you're relaxed, now when the muscle decides to contract, it's gotta go this whole way for it to stiffen up. When it's stiffen up, that's when it can start pulling on the bone, transmitting those forces from the bone to the muscle itself. So rather than having relaxed suboptimal tendon stiffness, we can train those components to have it at a relaxed optimal stiffness state. So rather than our delay being the whole way from here to there, it can just be from here to bam, right there. I like using the analogy about electric and gas powered cars, okay? In a gas powered car, combustion happens when you put the uh, gas pedal to the floor, causing a delay before that car can actually accelerate. But if you hop in a Tesla, an electric car, as soon as you press that gas pedal, there's no combustion, so the car immediately begins to accelerate. This is why in this video here, this 750 horsepower Lamborghini is no match for the Tesla Model X. Training your tendons to reach optimal tendon stiffness will help decrease that electromechanical delay which will in turn maybe help you catch up to that 95 mile an hour fastball. So to train these qualities, we have to take out the most important phase in the stretch shortening cycle, which is that active phase. So for instance, when you move into a vertical jump, if you were to start your vertical jump with your hands on your hips and from this position, there's no way you're gonna get as high as if you walk into it with a counter movement jump. That's because when we go into a counter movement jump, we are eccentrically loading, which is your active phase. From here, you have no active phase. With an active phase, you decrease that electromechanical delay. So when we are looking to decrease that electromechanical delay in training, we have to take out that active phase of the stretch shortening cycle. This move of sitting on a box in complete relaxation, my nervous system decides to activate the muscle fibers. My body has no choice but to do this quick without the activation phase. So in turn, it's integrating those optimal tendon stiffnesses. This decreases my electromechanical delay. And by decreasing this electromechanical delay, it's gonna allow you to produce more lateral force when you put it all together with the activation phase when you're in a game, when you begin to descend down the mound or you start loading in the batter's box to that pitch. GF Performance describes this pre-activation phase as the superpower for the stretch shortening cycle. 
So in order to increase a trait, you have to either train that superpower directly or completely take it out and train without it. So a real world application of this is if you have a blind person, their other senses are gonna increase. So a blind person may be better at hearing or smelling than a person that can see. Okay, this is because in order to survive, their body has to adapt to bring those other senses up like hearing and smelling. The normal human that can see, since they have that power, these traits like smelling and hearing are going to decrease. It essentially comes down to if you don't use it, you lose it. However, if I go blind tomorrow, I mean, knock on wood, hopefully that doesn't happen, my body's gonna need to bring up those other senses for me to survive. And same thing with producing force and hacking the stretch shortening cycle. If that pre-activation phase is my power, we need to train without that power to bring up the other components that allow us to produce force.